Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's session, we are going to discuss how you can improve your SQL query performance. So the first point is you should use a specific column names. Okay, columns instead of instead of a star to get all records. Okay, because what happens sometimes uh, we do not actually need all the records from the table. Okay, so let's say for an example, this is our table. Select a star from employee new. Okay. So here in this table, I mean, as of now, we have a uh, very less record, right? So instead of this, uh, let's say you want to get uh, just the employee name. Okay. So you will be writing employee name or even if you want to get all the columns, then also you should use the column names, not use the star. Okay. So let me show you how you can do it. So just press alt function F1. Okay. And from here, you can get all the column names. So you can just write down here and just put comma. Okay. So instead of a star, always use the column names because this will improve the performance uh, of the SQL query. So here you go. You are getting the same records, but we have avoided the star. Now the second point we can discuss is you should always use the group by instead of uh, distinct. Okay. So let's see this with an example. So we can write select a star from. Let's take one table name called uh, employee info, and if you query this table, okay. Uh, guys, <laughs> I'm using a star just to show you. Okay, uh, so don't comment that uh, you showed us not to write a star and you are using a star. Okay, so here, if you see, we do have departments, right? So let's see how you could have done with the help of distinct. So both will produce the same result. You will be writing select distinct department from this table. Okay, so this will give you the distinct department. Uh, I mean, we have four distinct departments, right? But let's see how you can do it using group by. So you can write select and then uh, department. Okay, then from table. So table is this. And then you need to write group by department. That's it. So this will also give you the same result, but this has some query improvements. Now, the third point is you should always use top slash limit. Okay, let's say you want to query some table which uh, you have never seen. Okay, so what you'll be doing, you'll not be writing select a star from table XYZ. Okay, so in that case, you'll be always using the top or limit. So you can write something like top three. And uh, let's say you want to get the records from the employee info table. Okay, so you'll be writing this and then table name. Okay, so something like this. So this will give you the top three record. Again, if you want to get uh, it uh, based on the order of anything, uh, then you can apply the order by. 1 DSC also okay so this will give you the latest three records right now the fourth point in the bucket is you should always use primary key while creating the table okay so let me show you by creating a table so create table uh, let's say sample table okay uh, let me just put the ID here so ID is going to be in teaser and then you can keep the ID as primary key okay if you want to add the constant here as well then you can write the constant as let's say constant and then id x something like uh, id and then sample table okay let's keep the second uh, column as name where can let's say 100 okay now if you create it it will create a table with primary key as well as uh, index so let's see now so if you see this is your table created and these are the columns okay and if you see here this is the primary key created and this is the constant name that we have given here okay now the fifth point is related to this uh, so basically if you have a table and if you want to add uh, index to any of the column okay then you can do that so uh adding index is always better but there are disadvantages as well uh, when it comes to insert update or delete so indexing is uh, only better for the select operation okay so let's see how you can create one index uh, with the existing table so let's take one example of this employee info table so as of now let me just do one thing select a star from this so if you see this table okay uh, let me again check the property of this table so as of now this table has uh, only one index that to applied on the primary key okay so uh this should be the primary key now i want to apply the indexing on this department table as well so how you can create one index on this department table so let's see that so you can write create index let's give the index name as something like idx department and then table name which is employee 
info okay and then here you have to give the table name but first you have to write on then give the table name and then under bracket give the column name as well so our column name is department column right so we'll be writing departments okay now if you execute it this will create one index on the department table and if i show you the property now it will have the index created so let's see now so here you go this is the second index created but this is a non cluster index now coming to the sixth point guys uh, when you create the new store procedure okay you should always create one store procedure started with usp okay not with uh, asp the reason here is let me show you the reason as well so if you go to view object explorer okay so here if you see uh, where you are going to find the store procedure so let's say you have created one store procedure with sp okay so you can go to programmability and then a store procedure and then here you will find your store procedure okay but when you expand this system store procedure there are a lot of store procedure with sp so this is your own database right but there are other database also like uh, system database so inside this master if you go to the programmability and store procedure there are a lot of store procedure uh, start with sp okay the same thing uh, what we are saying there right now when you try to execute the store procedure started with sp that you have created it will first try to look into the master database okay and then it will go to your database but at the same time when you have created the store procedure started with usp it will go directly to your database and it will search for that store procedure so using this uh, it is a bit faster right now the seventh point in the bucket is you should always use try catch when you are writing the store procedure okay so so i'm not going to cover this try catch here because i already have covered this inside a short video in details so you can go to youtube okay and then you can search try catch in sql i'm sure it's gonna uh give you one of my video okay so uh this is the one okay so you can just uh go so let's see this how you can handle the exception in sql or how uh, let's come back to our own topic now okay so last but not the least you should always use no lock when you are querying something okay so why do we need to use no lock okay so let me first show you how to use the no lock okay so you can write select let's say emp name from employee info where the hell is employee info employee info where emp id where is emp id is equal to seven okay so this is without using the no lock right so this has written you some result so what happened let's say you are querying uh, this table and this table has a lot of records okay and the query is a bit complex then in that case let's say if your transaction got stuck then other people who wants to query this table on the same server will not be able to do so because this table has been locked so for that same reason you should always use with no lock okay so you can use with no lock or you can directly write no lock okay so both are same actually so this will make sure uh, whatever you do with this table is not locking for other people who wants to query this table on the same server so that's pretty much guys uh, i hope uh, you might have got something uh, in the today session so we'll meet up in the next video till then bye bye take care